Hello everyone and welcome. In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a Spotfire application that writes data based on user input back into a Redshift database. You can find all of the code I am using on gist.github. The link is in the description. The way this application works is that the user marks a single or multiple rows. The table one that I called employees changes some attributes in the user interface, then clicks a submit button and the marked rows will be written back into the second table that I called employees changed. All right, now that you know what our final product looks like, let's get into creating it. Before I begin, I want to let you know that this tutorial will consist of two parts. In the first one, I am going to create the tables and the procedure. In the second video, we will do the development in Spotfire. Therefore, if you already have your tables and the procedure, you can go ahead and skip to the second video. And all right, now we can go ahead and start. First, we need to connect to our Retrieve database. The database management tool I am using is called dBeaver. It is a free open source software but you can use whatever tool you prefer. If you wish to download dBeaver, the link is in the description. Once you are logged in, we can go ahead and create our two tables, employees and employees changed. As you can see, I already have them, but for the sake of this tutorial, I will create them again. So let's open a new SQL script. And to save your time with the uninteresting but necessary SQL code, I will copy paste it. And as I mentioned before, if you wish to create the exact same tables as I have, the SQL code is in the gist link in the description below. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and paste in our first table. Because I already have it, I'm going to drop it first. Now I'm going to create it. And as you can see, we have four columns, ID, name, position, and employed status. For ID, I use the identity option, which means it is going to be incrementing the ID automatically. And the data types are integer for ID and varchar for the rest for name, position, and employed status. Don't forget to also grant permission for yourself on the table. Now we can go ahead and create our second table, which is our employees changed. And again, I'm going to drop it first. And then I'm going to create it. And as you can see, we have the same four columns again. But now we are not having the identity option because we are going to be writing here from Spotfire and Spotfire is going to be taking the ID. So we don't need any increment here. But additionally, we have two more columns. We have time of change and we have comment. All right. And we are also granting the permission as well. Once you have these two tables set up, we can go ahead and insert some dummy data into our employees table. Okay, so it is a simple insert statement. So I'm going to insert six rows. Uh, you can insert more, you can insert less, it depends on you. All right, let's go ahead and insert that in. All right, user is updated, so it executed successfully. And before we move on to Spotfire, there is one more important thing we need to do, and that is to create a procedure. But do not worry, it will be just a simple insert into procedure. And again, the code is available to you on Gist. The process is the same as creating a table. So let's go ahead and copy this. can see create or replace procedure. I named it Brock Spotfire Writeback. And now we have brackets. 
and inside these brackets we are going to declare our parameters. I named each parameter with their respective column name and with parameter and underscore in front of it. And we are also stating the data type of the parameter and the data types are the same as our columns. But keep in mind that this procedure is going to be inserting into employees changed table. Therefore, we also need to specify parameters for time of change and for comment. Once you have the parameters declared, you can set the procedure language as PLPG SQL, which is basically a procedural language, Postgre SQL. And we are going to insert into, as I stated before, our employees change table. We specify the columns and for values, we use our parameters that we just declared in here. These parameters, basically what they are going to do is they are going to be taking up the values from our spot fire. So as you can see, the process of the write back is that in Spotfire, we are able to assign values to these parameters. Then Spotfire, or should I say Spotfire information link, but we'll get to that back later, is going to pass on these uh, values through parameters in here. And then we are going to put these parameters into our columns as values. And that is the main logic of this application of the of the write back. All right, don't forget the semicolons. And also we have to grant permissions on the procedure. So grant all on procedure. And here is one thing to note that for a procedure, each parameter and each data type acts as a part of the name, meaning that, for example, in here, if I would change this into, let's say, in 8, so a begin, and I would execute this, it would save as a completely new procedure, because right now it is going to be a, a different one, a new unique name. So keep this in mind that when you are granting access, that you also have to copy the whole name, the whole bracket with all the parameters, with all the data type, because this whole thing is a unique name. So keep that in mind. We are granting that to AVS user. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's execute this. Right. Now we can go ahead and refresh the database. Okay, let's go and check our tables, data. Yes, we have our six rows here. Let's open our employees change. It does not have any data. That is good because here we will be inserting from Spotfire. And as it goes for your procedure, you can find it under functions. And we can see it here. You can open it up, check it, and in the source, you have your code. All right. And if you have all of this set up, then we can conclude this as our database setup and move on to Spotfire.